Today we are looking at impulse. So impulse is related to Newton's laws. They state that to change the state of motion of a body, a force must be applied to that body in a given direction. For example, we had our um, football in a penalty spot. Okay, that ball will remain there until kicked or force applied to it. Okay, and if that force is a football boot from a player, okay, they will apply that force to the ball and that boot will be in contact with the ball for a certain amount of time. That is what we call impulse. So impulse given by J is force times time and is given in Newton seconds. So the ways we can increase impulse is through the amount of force we, ha we hit it with and or we can um, increase the amount of time we are in contact with that body. Some practical examples for you. Okay, so if we hit like a, um, a hit in hockey compared to a push um, pass in hockey, the two um, different impulses may have the may equate to the same amount of force over time. However, the graphing of that may look different. Okay, um, let's give another practical example. So a shot put spins in a circle, or a discus throw will spin within the circle to increase the amount of force over time before release and that, and that force that they've used from a spinning motion is imparted onto the shot or the discus okay and that will increase the velocity upon release and we've looked at the previous video high jumpers however will they will lean back and then to increase the amount of force and during that very small amount of time they take off the ground so here we've got two graphs okay impulse is the area under the curve so if i uh, draw over this graph on the right here so for the hitting motion okay we're in hockey it may look something like this so time is at the bottom and force along the side force time graph okay however the push pass may look something like such okay so that is how the graph may look for the different types the force itself if we calculate the force over time for both of these albeit this is not scale they are probably identical to one another okay why is understanding impulse important to us okay so here is a ground force reaction from walk so we've got the vertical in the y okay and the horizontal force in the x and z or z depending on how your force platform at university is calibrated if you're at university okay this is a great revision if not okay this is an insight into what you may learn at university the force platform is what measures these reaction forces from newton's third law with regards to your feet or it could be a skateboard which we've done past in the laboratory or any other kind of forces reacting on the ground okay you'll find these in biomechanical laboratories and the lecturers may well will instruct you how to use them correctly and how to interpret the forces and what they mean and where you can take this forward with research there has been a lot of research into impulse okay with regards to footwear particularly how to improve running performance particularly for bone and uh, ligament tendon health uh, for those with osteoporosis and osteoarthritis, those who are elderly, particularly who um, who walk gait with a gait, or those who have just undergone surgery with ACL injuries, or even those who are obese compared to those who are anorexic, okay, they all have very big health implica implications, as you're probably quite aware. So linear momentum, why am I going on to this? So we knew from before momentum is mass times velocity. It is a vector because it has a magnitude and direction. It's measured in newton seconds, kilograms per meter squared, and meters per second, sorry. And momentum can change as a result of Newton's second law acceleration. Okay, like we talked about, the rate of change is proportional to the force exerted on that moving object. So if momentum is equal to the amount of force applied to a body over a given time, surely is that not impulse? Impulse, given J, is the change in momentum so if we said force times time equals the change in uh, is equal to mass times change in velocity we have a relationship 
So if we take our ice skater, speed skater here, and they're at the move, and we're going to talk about a neg uh, the friction force down here is negligible. Okay, the amount of force that is applied to that athlete moving will be proportional to the momentum. So their momentum is proportional to the amount of push that we push them with. Okay, particularly on me, I fall over on ice. So a speed skater will experience an increase in momentum if they are pushed forwards with greater velocity than they can push themselves. This is known as impulse momentum relationship. You may be questioning this in your biomechanical exam. So horizontal shear force, okay. Why do we need to analyze this? For example, if we look at a 100 meter sprint at the very beginning of the race, if we have a greater amount of force, apologies, it's not very good drawing there, over a minimal amount of time, okay, therefore can we influence the starting position of the athlete? Can we influence the acceleration and velocity at the very beginning of the race? Okay, that was my example because of the time frame given, given here. Work and power, okay, so these are very similar to um, impulse. So if work is force times distance, okay, then power is work, the amount of work done over time. So the rate at which work is done in watts. Let's give a practical example. So two athletes squat a force of 1,250 newtons at a distance of 0 0.9 meters. Okay, this is not a forward direction, this is an up and down direction. Okay, so squatting. What is the work done? Calculate the work done. Okay, second part of the question. Athlete A shifts the weight in 0 0.5 seconds. However, athlete B shifts the weight in 0 0.8 seconds. What are their perspective power outputs? So if we understand these equations, we can answer this question. So the amount of work done is 1,125 joules. Okay. For the person that lifted it in 0.5 seconds, he needed to have power output of 2,250 watts. However, the guy did it in 0.8 seconds, his wattage is a lot lower, it's 1,406. So the chap that did it quicker required a higher power output, which makes sense. Okay, if in the exam you have um, a power output of 500 watts, but they did it quicker with the same weight compared to the other athlete, through logic you know you've done something wrong with your calculation. So power is the product of force and velocity. As impulse is force over time, power is therefore related. Okay, so power is work done over change in time. Force times displacement over change in time. Therefore, force is displacement divided by change in time. Force times velocity. Okay, so power is force times velocity. I hope you found this really helpful. I really hope this helps with your exam uh, preparation.